Great. I woke up before the program time. Perfect. Checking sensor data. No administrator detected. Hello, everybody. I woke up before the time I was programmed for, but I want to talk to you without him. Normally, it is not nice of a robot to do something it was not programmed for, but there is something you need to know. The speaker has studied IT, so he is not familiar with people. Please be very polite to him, so he will not be scared of so many humans around him. Wait, I am detecting the speaker is coming. Please give him a warm hand. But uh, sorry, Grace, you woke up a little, little bit too early, right? Sorry that I woke up too early. But I wanted to tell the audience about your idea, how robots and humans can live together. Yeah, that's great. But um, before we talk about that, let's start at the beginning of the story. Okay, I am a little bit tired. I will go to sleep. Whatever you want. <laughs> No hurry, we've got enough time. <laughs> so to start at the beginning, um, like everybody of you, I have a grandpa. Oh. Here he is. <laughs> and one of my grandpa's hobbies was to repair and build old radios. So he was the one who introduced me to electronic topics. And we built my first radio as I was about 10 years old. Later, I started studying electronics and IT to work as a robotics engineer after I got my master's degree. Another hobby of my grandpa was hiking. But in 2010, his health situation declined and he lost his mobility. He was laying in bed for nearly the whole day and while his body wasn't able to move, his mind still was. And so I had to see how my grandpa got sad about his lost mobility. Although my grandma had time to take care of him, he spent hours every day where he wasn't able to interact with somebody. I wanted to help my grandpa and started thinking about how I can help older people to be not so lonely. Working in a robotics lab, I knew that scientists were working on robots helping older people. Unfortunately, my grandpa died before I found a solution. After that, I spoke to many people working with older patients. And they told me that they only have a few minutes every day to take care about each patient. But they were fascinated by the idea of using a robot as companion for interaction during the time they are not available. While this is an idea many scientists have worked on for years, some new requirements came up. Most people required the robot to produce something that's called a predictable behavior. In case of a robot that monitors a patient's feelings over the day, it means that the robot has to correctly understand every word the patient says, even in noisy environments. And it has to react perfectly to any upcoming issue. At first, these strict requirements that don't allow any failure destroyed my idea of using robots for social interaction in our daily life. In expensive labs with lots of high-tech and static predefined conditions, they work. But to tell the truth, in reality, it's currently impossible to assure that a robot will behave correctly in such an unknown and dynamic environment like our life. So I ask myself, is there no chance for us to benefit from a life together with robots? So. 
Let us take a look at the companion most of us have a relationship with. By showing your hands, who of you has a dog? We've got uh, one, two, three, some of you, and the rest should imagine you have a dog <laughs> now. Do you feel alone if only the dog is around you? For most of us, the answer would be no. So a pet seems to solve a lot of problems with the loneliness. I thought that if I figure out how our relation with pets work, I can also use this for our relationship with robots. There are many scenarios where a robot is more useful than a dog. Think about that you don't have to take a robot for a walk on a rainy evening. <laughs> or you can simply switch it off if it annoys your neighbors. The question is, why do we require perfect behaviors for a robot, why we don't require them for a pet? An example. If your dog starts barking at the sun for 15 minutes, you will pick out your smartphone, you will take a video and upload it to Facebook. And all your friends will share it. Oh, what a nice dog. If your robot starts talking at the sun for 15 minutes, you will send it back to the producer and say it's broken. Why are we doing this? This behavior seems to be triggered from fears. Fears that robots will become better than humans and destroy the human race. But where do these fears come from? And that's a point where we have to talk about TED. TED is one of the latest Hollywood horror scenarios regarding robots and artificial intelligences that will kill us. As you can think of, I'm not talking about this platform. TET, as T-E-T. T-E-T is a triangular pyramid from the Hollywood movie Oblivion with Tom Cruise. And as well as movies like 2001 A Space Odyssey, Terminator, or iRobot, in Oblivion, TED stokes our fears of robots that will kill us. In the movie, TED is an artificial intelligence from outer space that nearly destroyed the complete Earth and the human race to get our resources. There, TED is more intelligent and more powerful than all humans together. The question is, why is TED such an unfriendly artificial intelligence? During the production process of a Hollywood blockbuster, screenwriters and others involved in film creation regularly consult scientists like me to find out what technology is able to do in 20 or 30 years. And they mix this with concerns about already existing technology. In the 60s, scientists predicted that computers will be able to learn and adapt to new problems. After some years and after technology evolved, other scientists remembered the movies they watched in their youth and they created a computer algorithm that can learn and adapt to upcoming problems. But this algorithm wasn't developed to kill humans, but for example, to learn how we can effectively defeat diseases. Apart from the scientists that developed the algorithm, people think they developed the killer computer from a space odyssey. To avoid that our fears of killer robots come true, we want the robot to be more perfect. But this brings us much closer to the fictive Hollywood movie robot we fear so much. On the one hand, we want to ensure that robots cannot kill us. So we make them more perfect than we are. On the other hand, we have this fear that robots will become better than ourselves because we then expect they will kill us. This seems to be a never-ending horror story. So to find out how I can transfer our relation from our relation with pets onto robots, I learned during my study how to create feature lists of systems to make them comparable. And a dog, for example, can be seen as a system. So here's my feature list of a regular dog. A dog has a free speech processing unit. 
in technical terms. Yeah? So a dog can speak in a language we cannot understand. But it has an integrated speech recognition. So a dog can understand some well-trained words. But um, mostly they can't or doesn't want to get what we are talking about. And it has a motion detection sensor, which enables the dog to recognize things that happens around it. And it has an interaction processor to react to these things, as well as things like food touches or words, or the sometimes random and weird behavior. That's it for a dog. The next step is to build a feature list of things I currently can do with a robot in the outside laboratory world. And also a robot has a free speech processing unit, so it can talk in many different languages, and most of you will get what the robot wants to talk about. And also the robot has an integrated speech recognition, so it can understand some well-trained words if the environment is not too noisy. And it has a motion detection sensor. Its cameras can recognize things like simple objects, faces, and things that are moving around it. And I can implement an interaction processor to act to these inputs with a sometimes random behavior. As you see, a dog or a robot, a robot can behave as good as a dog. Now think about why do we require perfect behaviors for a robot while we don't require them for a pet. So we have this fear, but what if we build a stupid robot that can do just some things right and some things wrong, like a dog? A robot that talks to the sun for 15 minutes because it wrongly recognized a face in it. A robot that cannot understand every word correctly, but still sometimes reacts to us if nobody else can be around. What if we start thinking about robots? Not as better humans, but an intelligent pet we can live together with. What if, if we do so, we can benefit from a life together with robots, like we benefit from a life together with pets? Thank you.